Yeah, you've, you've got a very different, you know, sort of side of the seedings. Your first round, you get choice of side. You get arguably easier opponents right there. It's it's interesting, and also you kind of think about the fact that, right, they own the tiebreaker against Dignitas and Counterlogic Gaming, who will be one of their opponents if they get the fourth seed. Teams that they beat three to one or four to zero this split. Those are great opponents to pull from. Yeah, and historically they haven't had the best success against TSM. So if they got six and had to play TSM in the first round of the playoffs, it would be a bad start to the playoffs for them. So we're going to see what they can do. All here. right. Yes. We're going to see what they can do here. First pick's coming on through right off the bat. Shifter taking away Ari. Riven Shen Zed banned away. No surprise there. The Zach Thresh and uh, Zach Twitch and Elise actually. Really not surprising bands on coast side either. Yeah, such a popular pick, Ari, yeah. nowadays. Her ability to find people out of position and make them pay for it, especially once she gets that Deathfire grasp and can just 100% any support in the game, has made her a very, very popular pick with all these mid laners who love getting the kills. I feel like if someone played Alistair, they'd survive it. Alas, we have not seen the Raging Bull in such a long time. It's Mad Life sad. still plays him sometimes. It's got to it's got to percolate back around to the Western world and have you play him <laughs> again. It was successful, man. I gotta say. Well, if if someone would do it, it'd probably be Patoy, I'd guess. But yeah, he used to run it. Oh well. On the other hand, we do have another favorite support here, Edward's Thresh. It's kind of synonymous. Patoy, Alistair, Edward Thresh. It's the just the champions that they love playing. They have the most fun playing. Mm -hmm. And we've seen so much here in the North American LCS how the teams that are having fun are the ones that are having success. And putting him on one of those big playmakers is nice. Cop as well on Caitlyn. We've actually seen a lot of duo lane grabs by the red team. There was uh, TSM's done it with the Sona Twitch. We've seen that now right here with the uh, the Thresh Caitlyn. The duo lanes tend to get grabbed early on. They've shown what that lane's going to be, but they're confident with it. And it's not any secret either. I mean, Edward said, even in that last video, if he was going to have one champion, it would be Blitzcrank or Thresh. So he got the one that he wanted. Didn't go in alphabetical order here, unfortunately. <laughs> Went for the second of the two, but it's all right. He's been good with the champion so far. Played him eight times, I believe, before now, and he's going to make this his ninth. And locking in Caitlyn with that um, does give a lot of early game potential to that lane. Not only does Thresh have the ability to make um, their own plays in lane, but Caitlyn's range advantage um, can afford them a lot of easy harass very early with just trading one auto attack at a time. The way Caitlyn likes to abuse her range, since she doesn't have very good um, attack speed, is to just get one shot off on the air opponent while they're going for a minion and then back off. The extended yep. trades are the way that you uh, trade back with Caitlyn if you're the opponent. And actually once in a while as well, speaking of sort of extended trades, at least using the range, every once in a while you can land the trap while they're crowd controlled and they Love can't that. fire back, you're in 650 <laughs> range and you just laugh at them the whole time through. But Coast, they've actually already said, here's the lane we want with uh, Zyra Vayne to fight against it. I can't imagine that's a 2v2 lane. I feel like that's a lane swap here for Coast. You know what else? Um, Don't Mash Me said, you know, they would at least hover over Heimerdinger. Well, he said he would pick it, mm -hmm. but I've, I've had my fair share of trolls, and I don't think that they'll actually lock it in since they already have that Bane. But if he did, I don't know what sort of prize I would give him, but I would say uh, he'll get uh, he'll get an honor. High five. I'll honor him after the game. You'll give him. I'll give him I don't think you can honor as a spectator. Honorable opponent. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. Of course, the Mumu coming back in here for a curse. The Oriana for Jackie. These are definitely picks that they've been showing a lot recently. The Ori's been banned away from Jackie. The Amumu he ran just recently. Mm -hmm. Right, this is looking like a good curse composition so far. Yeah, so they're going to wuss out on the old Heimerdinger threat there and uh, instead go with a couple of mobile high damage AD champions in Lee Sin and Kha'Zix. So this fits so well with the other two damage champions that Coast already have. Ari plus Vayne have their own repositioning abilities. Mm -hmm. So this is a very, very mobile team, once again from Team Coast. It's definitely their play style. They pretty much always rely on mobility rather than tanky stats. Yeah. They would much rather dodge the damage than have anyone take it. <laughs> and it's a and it's a play style that's actually worked for them pretty well, I think. Their, uh, their game against Vulcan this week, I think, was Vulcan's closest game. Uh, I think Coast was actually winning in yeah. kills at the time the game was over. And Zion, even though he had a rough lane, still went like 5-3 and three or something in that game on, on Kha'Zix. One of the only players to still play him after the sort of minor rework a month or so ago. Uh, they've been successful with this sort of team composition. Curse, of course, going with a very different look, though. Very 
go in, bruise you, put a, put a lot of lockdown in. Amumu, Orianna, Cannon. This is a very team fight based team for Curse. Yeah, it's basically uh, Curse picking up the shotgun to try and deal with all of these mobile Coast champions. Mm -hmm. They've got this Amumu giant circle that if St. Vicious has his flash, will be very hard for Coast to, uh, Coast to avoid. And then they also have Kennen with a similar size giant AOE ultimate to lock down a large area. So even though these Coast champions are very good at dodging in and out, mm -hmm. um, Curse have gone with almost as big of an area of an effect composition as they can get. It's interesting to look at though, because while the Janna wasn't grabbed, there is the Lee Sin for the potential knockback here on Kennet, there, there's a disengage available for Coast to remove some of that all-in from Curse. It would be nice if he could get the uh, the knockback, knocking back Kennen into the rest of the team. If Kennen has rushed into you, is the perfect situation because not only do you get out of that slicing maelstrom damage, but you CC the rest of the team and mm. open up your uh, flanking champions, which is the Ari and the Kazakhs, to pick off people on the side. That'd be all kinds of fun. We'll see if they can coordinate the team. Coast is the team that people have talked about and said, yeah, they have moments of crazy brilliance where they do amazing things and, and moments where it just doesn't quite click for them here. That was Lemonade who talked about that before their first match of the day. And we'll see which Coast shows up here, the genius or the, or the unfortunate one. <laughs> Curse, of course, play in a, a, a standard composition for them. I guess really both these teams are playing their types of champions, as you talked about. Curse, uh, you know, all together for the team fight. The Mimu showing back up. Coast very flighty and assassin based, which is going to make for a really fun show. I love when teams bring different things out here. Now, Coast, unfortunately, in this game, don't have much to fight for aside from pride themselves and some practice coming into what will be the, the spring promotion tournament for season four. Curse, though, are again fighting for fourth place if they win, sixth place if they lose. And sixth place means they fight TSM, a TSM who are looking incredibly good right now. Not a place I think Curse wants to be. So it means a heck of a lot for the red team especially. Gonna have to hope that they land those shotgun uh, pellets. Yeah, there we go. Um, no graves, ultimates. unfortunately. That would have been thematic at that point, but they're doing, they're doing the, the shotgun with a sniper rifle. The Peacemaker works pretty well. Yeah. Anyway, Team Coast all pinged up through this top bush. So they've been planning this out, this level one preconceived. Cop is in the safest possible Ooh. spot there and just barely does not get hit. But three people around, that's always nice to be able to instantly clear a ward that's placed. So 10 free gold here for Team Coast, an early gold lead for the blue team. A couple of wards put down by Edward as well. But still, Coast off to the early advantage here. There's no more Explorer ward for Edward, so they're up an item as well as 10 gold. And we talked about this last game when Curse ran Amumu, but the importance of the first blue buff is is very, very high for any Amumu team because it will slow his jungle down tremendously if you're able to deny him that mana regen of the first blue buff. And look at the games that the teams are playing, actually. The red buff that Coast had invaded was already warded. They warded it themselves. They ran over looking for Curse's golem buffs, saying, can we stomp a movement? Can we get St. Vicious out of this and keep him from getting mana? They flank back to their own side, but at this point, they're not really revealed anymore. So Coast are doing a pretty good job of trying to steal stuff away from St. and not let him recover. It's an interesting adaptation here because Curse are thinking that the invade will come on their own blue buff. But with Lee Sin actually starting his red, that's gonna be his second destination. It'll be easy for him to go take that one away anyway because mm -hmm. of the AD carry and support switches that have rounded out though. Yeah, as we noticed, the uh, the dual lane top for Curse gives uh, Saint the cover he needed to make that one happen. And Zionsborn, of course, is alone here and suddenly he feels huh. out. He's been surrounded, learns the leap, gets played backwards, forced to flash. So he got a couple of last hits, that was nice, but loses the summoner spell for it. So he went out to grab an early 2 CS. It wasn't really that he got caught off guard because at this point, expect everybody's it. expecting the switches and he knows that they're going to be stealing away his blue and they'll be coming up. But the only way that he could get CS that early in the game is to rush out there and go grab two before <laughs> they come to the lane. And then he's like, well, I would just be waiting around getting zoned at my tower anyway, so I'll go back to base. And the stun lands on a void oh, with a kick as well. Oh, you are so dead, Void. Daydreaming, kill securing here. Now to point out, Patoy had actually taken the most kills for a support. Now Daydream is trying to rival him. Now, we don't usually see a lot of 
three minute kills anymore. But that's the perfect way to set them up. That condemn was pretty much just given to don't match me. And Boyboy teleports back in for another oh, one. Oh no, Boy Oh Boy. my god. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, that just happened. Void does get the kill, removes the buff from Nintendo, but uh, that is a large amount of gold going early on to uh, Team Coast. Oh no, Void going to get a talking to when they get back, because any time you die, teleport back and instantly die again. Yeah, it's a little rough. You can't show your face around the, the house for a little bit. You're going to have to go walk outside. A little rough. So uh, the bottom lane still getting pushed down. We uh, talked about how just a couple games ago, uh, the barely under four minute turret had happened. Now Zion's part the level one versus level three St. Vicious. Yeah, Zion, you're losing to St. pretty hard right there. Fully zoned out of his own lane. His turret's going down rapidly as well. So we're back to two weeks ago. Turret's going down early on. Yeah, what armor on turrets? I'm not, <laughs> not really sure that had any effect at all. Curse right here getting off to a very... Uh, a quick answer though, so they're not far behind at all, even the gold back up. It was just a flashy couple kills there on Voiplay. Well, here's the pressure onto the turret, of course, Daydream is going to pull turret aggro with a plan. He's got to be a bit careful here. Turret there dropping below about 200 health at this point. But Mash me and Core so trying to just put the damage onto Voi. Saint though now in a bit of a rough spot in his own jungle. Edward lands look unintended. This is not good for Lee Sin. Gets played back as well. Does he have anywhere to go? He does not kill picked up there for Saint. Nice job right there, two to two, and kills now for Those Curse. Those deadly invading Amumus. Yeah. When was the last time we saw an Amumu so aggressive that you were worried about him in your side of the jungle? When you got a duo lane, backing him up, the Thresh Prince, Edwards. Edwards got something to say about it. So now this will finally be the answer here. Uh, Team Coast do claim their their slight gold lead here of 100 gold. <laughs> yeah, but the push is still going in the top lane, though only the outer turrets get the early game armor buff. So this one actually dropping rather quickly. Zion and Hint is still trying to defend. And even though Voiboy died twice in a row after using his teleport, but teleport, it's a bit embarrassing, but he's still higher level than Zion because he got back and he was able to soak up more minions. But Zion just now hitting level two. That's a little bit rough for Zion Spartan. He had a really bad lane last time around when we saw him on uh, Kha'Zix. He turned it around at the end with good fighting and managed to pick up a bunch of kills, but he's definitely got his work cut out for him. We'll be able to track Zion throughout this game and see what kind of moves he can make. His flash, of course, still on cooldown from that first tussle in the lane at two minutes. We'll keep tracking him. 11 to 15 minions between these solo laners. The mid lane matchup is, though, one we have not talked about for a while, though. Shifter versus Nijaki. They burned their ignites earlier on in the matchup, trading blows. Ultimately, they're pretty close to each other, though. Only five minions apart, and they're hitting level six, which means it will get more explosive soon. Exactly. Until Ari has the mobility of that level six Spirit Rush, which he just got now, the kill potential is not quite there. Um, Jackie as Oriana can do a good job of just shielding herself and getting a lot of the damage. Plus, Jackie has rushed that chalice, so it's going to protect yeah. him from all, most of Shifter's damage. Exactly. I was just about to sort of call out the difference in builds there, the one being more protective, the one more offensive. But as you pointed out, yeah, Jackie's the one trying to keep himself a little bit more alive, using the magic resist to survive. Shifter, if he's like every, every other Ari we've seen this weekend, likely to go for that Deathfire Grasp and play as the Assassin. Don't match me though, has been swapped to the other side of the map now. Is waiting to pressure this top turret now with Daydream. And Voiboy is still set to defend him 1v2, but again, still outnumbered and outleveled. Voiboy's going to have a decent time um, at his turret though, until he gets condemned again and rooted up. Good CC chain here. And a lot of damage going on to Void. Look at that double cloth armor already picked up. He knows he's got to pretty much rush the Zonius to try to get some armor to survive, chug some potions, but is zoned out. However, Curse uses numbers advantage to push down for this dragon with a pink ward. No one's going to see this from Coast. They do have uh, the man advantage down here, so it'd be very dangerous for Coast to try and steal. They could have pulled one of the Lee Sin Q uh, over the walls into try and steal and then flash back out, but it would have been very dangerous and no flash on Nintendo means that, you know, he would not have had an escape plan for that. <laughs> uh, so nice try, but unfortunately not going to work out for these guys here. Uh, for Coast, I should say, of course, Curse making a really good move, putting themselves now 500 gold in the lead. As you continue to track their progress around the map, their duo lane, of course, doing a pretty good job. Cop, wow, that turret has already gone down in the top lane, so that's what Coast got to answer for with that dragon. I want to see if Cop and Edward can make that same thing happen because now it's Coast back again with the lead. And Coast are also sending Nintendo down to back Zion up, 
So it'll be a very long time before they're able to answer with this bottom turret. Nintendo, wow, taking a lot of damage for that one. Below half HP, but yes, with the defense, looks like it'll be happy. Now, something to be said for all of these two versus one swaps is that Zan Spartan on Kha'Zix uh, actually would would need a lot more farm rat to operate in the mid game than Kennen does. Kennen provides a lot more utility with his ultimate mm -hmm. and getting off the mini stuns in an area of effect. Whereas Zion actually needs a lot more attack damage to be able to perform as uh, Kha'Zix should and get those resets and executes. And speaking of, neither of those guys are actually level 6 yet, so Voiboy not yet providing that utility, has been zoned out a little bit. Zion Spartan not yet reaching an evolution either. But again, we'll see them as the game progresses. No games end at 9 minutes, so they'll scale up. St. Vicious level 6 just now from killing the big Wraith camp, and we'll see if he gets one of those ganks off with Cursed Sad Mummy last game. Took him to level 7 to find one, but it worked out pretty well. This time we'll see what happens. So now we're going to have to see if Voiboy decides to shove this lane back or if he just wants the last hit up there and freeze it because they have just answered with the bottom turret and you want to make good use of the timing of when you shove that top lane back so that you can make Coast decide which lane they want to go defend, top or bottom. Let's see what it ends up being here. Looks like Voy's actually still running around Near the jungle and whatnot, maybe taking double golems and stuff. Kop and Edward also still playing the aggressors. They want to stick around here and keep the lanes pushed down. So it looks like, yeah, it's it's the slightly more aggressive play here from Curse. You're seeing St. Vicious walk in, put an aggressive ward down as well. That'll help watch rotations from the 10 dude as well as from Shifter. So it seems that Curse are setting up for some aggressive play. Yeah, he's built up a very nice minion wave up here in the top lane. His cannon minion already down to half health, which will hurt him a little bit, but he has plenty of those range minions to answer. Here, there goes the ulti from St. and Jackie! Shockwave dissonance, the flash in from Nintendo, and unfortunately, though, still goes down. Nice pick up there, Nye Jackie. Shifter's charm not enough to kill off St. Vicious. Another advantage for Curse. They did get the kill in the middle by burning the two ultimates plus flash. However, Voiboy did have to back off of that giant minion wave that he was babysitting and it's gone all to Zion Spartan. So it's a whole bunch of food that Zion desperately needed to get back in this game and get that damage that we were talking about. He is freely last hitting this minion wave. And you see him right there, catch up in minion score. He's gonna catch up in levels, probably even surpass Boy Boy. Well, looks like he's going to be tasting their fear after all. Zion Spartan scaling up nicely to be that assassin. But Curse have other things to answer for. Top laner farming minions, great. We'll push mid instead. That turret down below half HP. So Curse are still finding, you know, they're not necessarily ganking Zion and, and going directly for the counter, but they're finding other things to do to keep pressure on and make Coast pay for what they do. And Vorvoy trying to remedy his top lane situation by bringing his own ward and placing it on blue buff as well as buying up a pink ward to try and clear out uh, Zion's vision when he pushes the lane back in his favor. See where he ends up putting that one, and if Boy Boy can play the mind games properly, you remember when he actually played against uh, Double If not too long ago, actually properly guessed just uh, where Double If went while invisible as Twitch? See if he can find where Zion Spartan's invisible ward goes. And that'll be uh, two for two on the blind guessing game for Boy, which I would like a lot. Lee Sin's pretty good at that blind guessing game. He's a good Lee Sin himself. player. He's had a lot of practice, but he, uh, Ninten being Nintendo, just placed a ward for um, Zion up in that tri bush. Uh, but the pressure is here. Not going to get stunned up, though. Good dodging by Nintendo to not take that last skill shot. Not by Cannon, nor by Amumu. And now what is next up here? Just the mid lane standoff. No gank pressure has been found right here. Both teams actually putting good enough ward presence down that they're not getting found. And now he jumps to that ward that he's put so sneakily. Here comes the teleport. And, and, and uh, don't matter, forced to cleanse away a root lands perfectly from Daydream and helping him stay safe. Shifter running away though from the ignite. Of course that flash had already been burned. <gasps> Ooh, and he dodges the trap as well. That would have killed him. Cop would have gotten that with the Yordle snap trap. Great job down bottom by Daydream and just countering that teleport in from Boy Boy, and that means that they lost their presence top lane, so he has to recall as quickly as possible, because now this time it's Zion with the minion, uh, the cannon wave minions. Or cannon minion wave. Yes. <laughs> Got the cannon minion in the wave. There's the push going down. Level 9 now on Zion. Continuing to scale up, continuing to be scary. 
That team is oh, pushing man. on forward. Void's been sent to the top lane, though. After the teleport, he recalled quickly, went to go defend. Zion actually recalling back in safety. And it looks like the bottom lane push also not succeeding for Curse. They got it to the turret, then said, okay, we'll back out. We're not going to yeah. get the turret. Curse did not manage their minion waves quite optimally right there. Void Boy was playing so cautiously that he missed out on a lot of experience. And that's pretty much the entire level discrepancy between him and Zion right now. It's it's getting very big. Two levels is pretty huge at 13 minutes in. And not to mention 28 minions. Like, Zion was screwed early on. Like, we, we called that out. How, okay, Void died twice, but he got an experience range. He's got a two-level lead. Zion was level one when Saint was three. And he was losing duels to Amumu as a, a single-target assassin. Zion fully recovering, ready to be a terror. But first, Curse are looking now for the dragon. Down to half health. They've got a five on four for now. The hook oh. lands on Nintendo. This is not going to be good for Lee Sin. He's going to go down. Kill picked up. Baron, or dragon resetting back to half HP, but Saint is still there. There's no smite to compete with. Another dragon going to curse. That's two of two and a 2,000 gold lead. The most important part was that Edward was able to land his descendants so Saint could save his ulti and Boy Boy could save his as well. There's no chance Coast will go in to fight a team fight when they still have both of those giant AoEs available. And Curse are greedy. They take a second reward for a single kill. They got the dragon. Now the middle turret as well. Three to two in turrets, two to zero in dragons, four to two in kills, and 2,500 gold now puts Curse ahead. This is looking good for these guys. The only aspect that they're losing in is that solo uh, laner, which is Boy Boy versus Zion. So Coast are putting a lot of weight on Zion to be able to carry this now. And he's not with them right now. They Demon Force ulti, knocking people up. Saint gets caught as well as Jackie and Edward. Is there going to be enough to shift there? Knocked around. He's got to run backwards. The passive not quite landing. Boy Boy kicked away. The ulti from Caitlyn doing some good damage there. Boy Boy still dropping an HP. <gasps> Can Zion get it? Finds one. Loses a lot of health though. The death sentence lands from Edward in stealth. Oh. And makes that a two for one for Curse. He only had one evolution there. He was not able to evolve his jump as well. So no reset for Zion meant he had to go down for that kill on Boy Boy and Curse were able to capitalize here. But that whole time, we've got Don't Mash Me at the bottom farming up a Bane. So that will be a very nice mid-game threat here. He'll be able to um, complete that Blade of the Rune King. He's got 17 gold to go and he's got it. So he's waiting in base for it. Blade of the Rune King gonna come out at about 16 minutes for this Bane. He'll be happy. Of course, Cop going for a very different build, going Infinity Edge in the Caitlyn. So different scaling paradigms for these champions, by the way. Actually, he stops. Never mind. Never mind. That's just that's part of Infinity. I thought he was going Phantom Band so randomly. Um, <laughs> it's like he bought a critical cloak. That's. Oh wait, no, that's part of the recipe. And freak, you're terrible at this game. Caitlyn, uh, Caitlyn definitely opting more for the yeah. auto attack damage because she's not much of a duelist. That's why uh, Blade of the Rune King not going to be a priority item for Don't Mash Me very early on. Yeah, not to mention the range difference. You have to like walk halfway in to get the entire point of your champion. That's All right, never guys, a good feeling. I slowed you down. Let me net backwards. <laughs> that wasn't worth it, was it? No. Uh, Cop, though, back on farm duty. And by the way, doing a very good job of, of to be fair, beating his sort of roll opponent in minion kills. He's up about 23 here, Cop, over Don't Mash Me. That's let him have actually, wow, an 800 gold lead. Even though Blade of the Rune King is done on one side, Cop has got way more money than Mash Me. But, however, Mash Me is happy with the item threshold that he's at. Mm -hmm. um, he had enough money to finish that Rune King after waiting around for that 17 gold on the steps. Um, so that means that he does have that very strong dueling potential now in vain. And if he met up with Don't Match Me, even though Don't Match Me's got his Infinity Edge completed, which is a much more expensive item, yeah. Vayne would have the advantage in a one versus one situation. Saint does not have the advantage in a two versus one situation. <laughs> has to run for the hills. Not so much. I think Shifter and Daydream unfortunately layered their crowd controls together and combined with the tenacity from Saint Vicious's Golem Spirit, got out pretty quickly. So he's nice and safe. But yeah, had to had to be a little bit scared. Jackie had to shield him and get him out there. And of course, Void Boy now the top lane on farming duty. That gold, that minion lead though, has jumped to 50. Zion's part is getting more and more ahead of Voy. That individual power we kept talking about for Coast. Zion being level 11, having a second evolution. It's almost got to be the oh jump Oh my at god, this point. he misses point blank bandage. And Saint, though, getting dropped again on health bars, but there's the jump in. Voy, but gonna find Zion. No HP left, but will it be enough for Shifter? It is. 
Zion survives the battle. The charm not going to stop the sun from coming out. Shifter still forced to jump away. Saint so tanky. Burns his ulti. His team is coming in from the river. This could be enough, but the ignite comes down. The charm misses, but the Q lands. <laughs> and ignite burns those bandages off. Turns the mummy to dust. And now Curse goes, well, he's already dead. Twice. Oh, Curse so uncoordinated coordinated right now. Jackie's going to try and finish this one off to answer. He'll but Coast still came out ahead in that trade. Because once again, they pulled that move off with Don't Mash Me down bottom. Farming up minions once again. So Boy Boy initially going for that kill onto Zion would have been a one versus one, it would have been fine. But they actually had vision because Shifter ran right next to Saint two seconds earlier to that. Wow. So it was a mis misplay aggression right there. So match me, he gets flash hooked. Oh, good clip of match, but will still put Edward in range. Now, can he win the duel? Stuns him on the wall. Mash me, do you have the damage? There's a Void Boy coming. You've got to be careful. Flash then picks one up. Now, can he win the duel? Nintendo is coming around. Will not be arranged to shield toss. He's going to jump forward anyway. Got to be afraid. Now, St. Vicious suddenly bit off more than he can chew. And the damage output is still coming through. The Caitlyn did not do anything. And then his two kills picked up. Nice job by Coast. They just funneled in there thinking they could save each member of Curse and they just ended up feeding an extra kill there on top of their earlier miscoordinated aggression so it's a couple of unfortunate events here for Coast. So the hook can land and the cleanse only takes off the stun part so Edward's still able to do the second activation to follow to don't match me but it was way too far ahead and they actually ended up paying for it here with two kills as Boy Boy first tries to save Edward and then St. Vicious tries to save Boy Boy, ends up paying for that one with an extra kill. It was a nice little move by Zion as well. Mid-fight, he saw the ulti was channeled onto Mashmi, stopped, turned around, blocked the shot, and then kept chasing St. Vicious. So all that going on, there's even more layers to how these fights go down. However, the revives are back in time. Cursor like, well, we got control over Dragon, and there's a couple of guys back in base with a teleport up for Boy Boy. They still have uh, the St. Vicious Amumu ultimate. They don't have Boy Boy with them, but they're still two members of Coast trailing, so they're going to just try and delay Curse right now. If Curse actually make the mistake and chase Coast, then they can easily turn this one around. Well, it looks like they might be going for it here. The Roots land, Saint drop, below half get caught, actually. Hook misses, he jumps over the wall with his Sight Stone. He's going to be safe for now. All right, so they've bought Boy Boy some alone time with this turret. And we'll see if he can actually stay long enough to put the damage on. But he backs out very early again. A lot of cautious, very, very cautious play here from Boy Boy all game long. Yeah, so all right, they're going to be OK with this one. Zion does clear these out pretty successfully. He's getting himself scaled up. That lead now under 50. It was up there before, but now uh, 43 minions separate Zion and Void Boy. It's still the, the record I want to track because that's still where the advantage chiefly lies here. Four Team Coast, the two and one Zion, making things happen. And I'd have to say that advantage, it has a lot to do with uh, Team Coast's composition and how it mentally affects Void Boy. We, I talked about him playing so cautiously this game, and a lot of it has to do with any member of Coast roaming around behind him could catch him out. Mm -hmm. So he's constantly worried about an Ari at his back, or at least Sin at his back, coming yep. to pick him off. And that's why, even with that ward at blue buff, he's been giving up some minion kills and um, not pressuring to the fullest of his ability. Yeah, it's definitely a scary place to be in. Shifter, the roaming Ari, Nintendo, the roaming Lee Sin. Even with four deaths, he's still been a part of four of his team's seven kills, Nintendo on Lee Sin. He's definitely doing a fair bit. And and again, I mean, you can ward the blue buff, but think about it. He's got a ruby sight suit. He can hop walls all day and just come in from the shadows. You'll never see him coming. It's the whole, the whole angle that Coast usually hope to achieve with their very mobile compositions. And, and Curse are definitely more at home when they're all next to each other. They would much rather have those large team fights. And we'll see what they can find. Right now, the team lurking in brush. Ah, Zion decides to reveal himself anyway. They don't quite get the catch onto that, Kaelin. Cop's going to be safe here. They tend to just sweeping things away. Void Boy still on split push duty. Looks like Curse are just going to play a slightly longer game here and try to, again, look for the major team fights. As you said, they want those big battles. The Dragon right. down, they don't find that. So they're actually going to try and delay as long as they can at this turret to buy Void Boy time to split push. 
and by the him time the 3.5 seconds that it takes for the upgraded teleport to come through. What they're going to do is have St. Vicious be the initial lockdown with his Curse of the Sad Mummy. And then after the teleport does come through with Void Boy, he can follow that one up. Well, that'll be the goal for these guys. Zion Spartan, though, has been sent on uh, counter push duty, but has no crowd to stop Void Boy. Now, Curse will find that outer, that second tier turret right there, making it 4 to 2. Shifter alone pushing mid. He's got to be aware of the push behind him. There are Curse members coming up the flank. Can Shifter stay long enough to kill the turret? He's got to leave now. He is on the correct side of the map to run away. Voivod is not cutting him off. The 10 dude spots the team. Turret does not go down, so Curse does defend that just barely successfully. About 250 health left in the structure. 318, that was close. Coast would love to be able to pick Voivod off with one of their assassin champions. Preferably the Ari, uh, because we're not sure if Zion acts even at this point. Being so fed can finish Voiboy off by himself. We saw up top, even when Voiboy's so far down in minions, mm -hmm. uh, Zion still having a tough time finishing solo, uh, finishing him off solo. Oh, he's still scaling up, though. I feel like you get to the point where Zion gets crazy. Saint getting jumped in right there. Down to Happy P. Burns his ulti. Void, but will he re-engage? Looks like he's going to go for it. Saint's still low. He's going to flash out. Zion off on the outside. Actually, almost no one getting caught by Void, ultimate. And then he flashing over the wall. Still alive. Does drop down. Shifter gets a shutdown, though. One for one in this battle. Mashby's still alive. Charm lands on to Void. He's been rooted. Forced him off his zone, but no one actually wanted to kill Void. It's just a cooldown loss right there. One for one, trading mid for jungle. Pretty good for Coast. Mid for jungle, plus the two giant AoE cooldowns of Curse. So Coast very happy with that one. And now they're going to look to steal away this blue buff. So they get an objective on top of that trade. Yeah, they get the blue buff. That's nice. Actually, just a recount on ultimates, though. Uh, Coast did actually use all of theirs. Now, granted, they're lower cooldown ultimates. See, so you're right. They, they will have a better time than St. Vicious will. But Cobb and Edward do still have theirs. If they wanted to play defense, they could press R if that would help. However, just coast out numbers curse right here. Edward tries to to fake with the uh, the lantern. Doesn't do anything though. This is going to be a turret going down. Coast finds their third, and they bring the game within a thousand gold. We still got quite the match on our hands. And it's all going to be about where coast catch curse out of position once again, because that that's pretty much their whole game plan this game and for the majority of all of their LCS games. They pretty much always try and pick these very mobile champions to catch you out of position. It's up to Curse to make use of their teleport on Void Boy without him getting caught. Well, the teleport at least is still up for this one. So as soon as the ultimates are back from cooldown, of which uh, three of the five are they're still winning on Saint and Void, they can go for uh, round four or so of the major team fight composition, see if they can find something. Curse still does lead in gold. They've got the ability to scale throughout this game. And Coasters, they've actually got a good set of wards scattered throughout the map. Coast really, uh, you know, that you see the bl the blue dots scattered throughout the jungle, trying to see where the where the rotations go. They find Void by clearing the top hand side of the map. They might find the next opening. However, with Dragon Up, this is the next interesting contest on the map. And this is what Coast are waiting for, so they can try and pull Coast into a fight inside this river where they can contain them. Oh, no steal on the dragon. Battle has begun, though. The teleport coming in from behind. There is Boy Boy. He's going to first find the support. That's not good for Daydream. And gets assassinated by a cop. Don't Matthew forced to run backwards. Good early fight here for Curse. Dragon as well as a couple of kills. Boy Boy dropped low. Saint on the outside. Also getting chunked. Zion Spartan pops the ulti. Not going to find anyone to jump in onto, though. And Curse disengaged with one for nothing. A good teleport in there from Boy Boy to pick up the kill. But the main story here is Saint Vicious hit the smite. They took the dragon down. Yeah, outsmited Nintendo. Dude, very well played there by Saint, making that fight worth it all in the end. Oh, Mash, he's going to clear away the double golem. So now you got to think about, all right, well, Curse are starting to really scale ahead at this point. They've got a, a pretty sizable lead of 3,000. That's one of the bigger leads we've seen in this game. Whereas they've still got the crazy team fight comp with a safe Caitlyn, the Ken and Amumu, Orianna. That's all kinds of scary. Can you rely on a Don't Mash Me Vayne to carry you into the late game? Or is, is Zion Spartan going to be big enough? Like, what does Coast do if they stop finding picks? So, the, the reason that Team Coast have been an inconsistent team in the LCS is because they love playing these types of champions. And this is uh, the general gameplay that they usually go for, which is inherently an inconsistent 
style of play because a lot of their potential relies on catching people out and landing those skill shots that are required to lock people up. So, short answer is no, not reliable. Okay. <laughs> they'll hope. They'll hope for the aim. They'll hope that they don't get dodged out or they guess the mind games properly. It's all skill. It is all skill. Ezra would say that, and I believe him. Let's see if they can do it. Cursed. Ooh. Waiting on the outside, they don't quite find the root. Put some plants in front of St. Vicious, and Mimi says, all right, I won't hug the, the, uh, the Vine Lasher. That's not my friend. This ward, though, maybe the creepy Thrash guy, I'll hug him. He'll be my friend. Find power in numbers there. Curse. Oh, this is what Coach don't want to do. The no. dance around Baron without vision. There goes Saint. He's going to dive into the side. Actually, a very split battle right here. Cop going to burn his ulti, not finding a kill for it. Nintendo dangerously low. Trying to run, but that will be a kill anyway. Saint Vicious is still re-engaging. Saint uh, low, but Mashby can't chase him out. That is a one for nothing again. Curses keep finding these openings. But Zion Spartan is hunting the weak gazelle here. Saint Vicious is in the middle of the pack, trying to be safe. And oh. Zion really wants a piece. The ward lands, or the ward comes down. They spot Zion. He's going to run away. Shifter finds Edward, though. He had been surrounded. Good pickup here. And as we said, the, uh, the Ari finds support, kills the support. All right, let's move on yeah, forward. Yeah, you got to relate this coast style of, of gameplay to like a pack of velociraptors. Nice. Uh, always, <laughs> always on the hunt for the straggler. And they were able to find Edward there on the wrong side without the rest of his team. And what's so great about that is Curse started that fight with a kill. They're like, we won that fight. And then Coast were like, no, we refuse. They found their own trade kill and even got a turret for it. So I got to commend Coast on, on their tenacity there. They lost the fight, and they said, no, we win the fight. Screw you. I made it happen. <laughs> it's funny that you uh, credit their tenacity when none of them have any tenacity. Good one. Hey. <sighs> <laughs> anyway. I got fooled with the Trinity Force, non-Trinity Force earlier. I, I, just, think I can't that, get out of this right today. I think the main point from that is that we need a Velociraptor uh, Kha'Zix skin. Yes. That seems mandatory now. And in fact, not even Nintendude has a 21 defense. He's got too much flat armor pen. So he doesn't even <laughs> yeah. have tenacity from the freaking mastery. Yeah. There is zero tenacity in the coast lineup, ladies and gentlemen. But they still have it in spirit. The players themselves can't be stunned. Their champions can. But Nintendo, you trip him up, he gets up faster than anyone else. Is that something that uh, Elements brings to the team? He instills yeah. in them. He's natural got a tenacity, tenacity. aura. The natural like human tenacity aura. There we go. That's what he does. All right. So Co Curse have... Groot's back up because, again, they don't want to get picked off and they're going to rely even more heavily on uh, sticking together now because they've felt what it's like to be separated from their brethren. They don't want to be cut out of position again. So, well, it's a that makes it very curious that Vorbo is actually up top right now because his teleport's not available. So I have to say, if Coast get any wind of Curse coming in, then uh, they're going to probably back up here. They're actually jumping forward. Nintendo getting caught Get and right. just explodes first. The lone Velociraptor dies. Daydream and down low on HP as well. Say Vicious splitting off. Shifter gets caught as well. That's two dinosaurs down. And Kerr's going to keep moving forward. And then Kerr's going to keep walking backwards. That was... Uh, All right, that's, that's what Vision will do for you. Yeah. Uh, Curse de definitely make a good move right there, uh, denying all the vision from Coast and forcing them to come back in. That was actually Coast's mistake of going in one by one. Now Daydreamer getting caught sleeping right there. The hook lands, kills him off. Now only Zion and Mashmi are left, and I don't think they can 2v5. Baron Nasher goes down. Well picked up. That is again a uh, smite out from St. Vicious. Second objective in a row secured by him. And here we go. Let's check out the last fight. All right, so this is Nintendo. Not only did he go in first by himself, but he used his safeguard to go in. So he had no escape after that anyway. Shifter does the exact same thing going in by himself. And Jackie does not care if it's a one-person shockwave. He's taking Shifter home dead. Yeah, Shifter jumped onto a trap. That was just a, so unfortunate for him. You as talked well. about how satisfying it is as Caitlyn. Yeah, to be able to just uh, freely auto attack people on, on traps. And Shifter loves cupcakes, so great job by Cop preying on his weakness. It's not even fair. There are only four Yordles. It says it is in the ability. Koz doesn't even have a Yordle on their team. They still eat the cupcakes. These guys are not playing by the rules. Tenacity and everything. Curse though, still on the aggression here. Another turret goes down, making that five to four for them. They got the Baron. They've gotten, I believe, every dragon as well. Curse winning by only 4,000 gold, oddly enough, despite like everything else in the scoreboard telling you they're up by a lot. 
The purple buff is definitely worth a lot too. So not only do they have that slight gold advantage, but they've got the stats that uh, come along with those circling purple flowers. Flowers? They're definitely flowers. Sure. I think they're runes. <laughs> sure. They're little runes. Sure they are. Sure, uh-huh. <laughs> sure, Kobe. They're All right. flowers. All right, the point is, uh, with that, they also have a lot more armor on Saint now. He's also gotten his Glacial Shroud, so they would not be opposed to a turret dive at this point in the game. Uh, and the only answer here from Coast that's that's been different than any of the last team fights is that Don't Mash Me now has his Quicksilver Sash to get out of that initial St. Vicious ultimate and be able to put out damage, which they previously have not had. And the push is still continuing for a curse. You're seeing that the damage output that lands tends to stick, whereas the damage from Coast is regenerated so quickly. So the siege is just continuing for this curse lineup. They're in pretty good shape. Cop firing away from far back. Edward even putting the lantern down to secure everything. And that is picked up successfully. You're seeing the base still under siege. Saint in front. Engage might come. There's the jump in. Saint down a half HP gets kicked right back out. Boy was gonna jump in there. Nowhere to kick him out. But the dive in the back is shifter. Will he find Jackie? There's one kill picked up for Zion Spartan. Saints ult comes across. Zion will go down. But that's two kills picked up so far for Coast. Zion's gonna just revive and be safe. Ever gonna shot. Don't match me. Can he fight Cop on the right hand side? He lands oh. a stop. No, he doesn't, and Cop kills him off. Coast forced to run away. The cop old No Nintendo! Shoot anyone else but Nintendo. Oh, so close right there. But it was a great job by Shifter rotating around the back there. He he did exactly what Ari needs to do and flanked to the back of this fight. Zion took the first hit right there. And that kick from Nintendo, by the way, saved both him and uh, Don't Mash Me from that Amumu ultimate. Right there, Shifter and Zion finally pay for their flank, but they took out the priority target. And with Zion getting back up, they're able to finish this one out ahead. Cops just barely able to hold his own. A oh, very interesting fight then by this Coast squad, putting themselves in a little bit of better shape. Their turret had already died. They're fighting a Baron buff, and they came out ahead in a direct five on five. Right? You talk about how inconsistent and crazy this, Cur this Coast team comp is. That was the exact type of fight Curse wanted. And Coast were like, by sheer force of will and innate tenacity, they found what they wanted. Zion now up to 3-1-3, three, three, 242 minions. It seems that even though he was down early on, he can't keep him out. Zion's still holding on for his team and uh, trying to carry it through late. Well, he did also use up the Guardian Angel charge. Mm -hmm. So that's a very long cooldown for Coast. And if the next fight from Curse comes before that gets back up, then they will have much better results as well as not having to deal with a turret this time. So an exposed inhibitor bottom is pretty much the best leverage that Curse can have for the next Baron that they're gonna be looking at. Yeah. They can easily force a, a, a fight in open territory down at that exposed inhibitor, and then rotate up to Baron to force Coast into another one of those blind engages where we yeah. saw them get the advantage before around Baron. Just make use of that Oracles. And to think about it, Voivoy also does have his teleport available. If they wanted to send him towards that bottom lane, split push by himself, pull someone over there in his TP back, they've got that in their back pocket as well. So Curse holding a lot of the core uh, the, the core setups here. 13 seconds until Baron Nasher respawns. Curse. Spooky Ghost coming for ya! They're scaring him away. It's Halloween here with a, with a mummy and Spooky Ghost. Well, that was Everyone's fun. fine. Yep, <laughs> I was scared. But Curse, with power and numbers, were okay. They held each other's hands and said, don't be afraid, it's just Halloween. Here we go, Baron coming up in two minutes. Got that number wrong for you guys, but it's just two minutes away there. And Curse still looking for their siege in the bottom lane. There's Voice putting the top, actually. So they're trying to pressure with their main force that bottom lane. Yeah, so the reason that they flipped it and they have their four members down bottom is because they actually really want to take that inhibitor before going to clear out uh, Vision around Baron. And they want Boy Boy to actually be able to teleport down to the bottom lane to flip the numbers. Oh, well, here we go. Nintendo steps on a trap, and that's going to be enough to send Curse back for now. St. Vicious going to be holding onto the ball for part of this one. And look at that. Jackie and Saint are controlling different sides Ooh. of the battle. Q lands on the cop, but it's too far for Nintendo to go in. All right, they're not going to chase down just yet. Wave's still getting cleared. Look at the pink ward, though, aggressively into the coast base. Able to scout for wards in case some were down. Able to kind of rest control right there. Zion actually waiting in the fog of war to leap in. Plus, it also adds the benefit of a very deep spot 
for Voiboy to teleport in, and it would cover the battlefield in vision so that when Zion uses his ulti, they can keep track of him and burn him down. A lot of good ideas there with that ward. Of course, Voice still in the top lane, and no one has... There we go. Zion's going now to try to sweep that up, try to control Baron and Dragon Get only a, a minute oh. away each. Get one hit, Boy Boy, on that turret. <laughs> well, right now it's the inhibitor they're getting hit a little bit. Cop playing very defensively. He's not risking his life when Lee Sin Q lands on him. Doesn't want to get kicked into the team. Then Ten Dude, he's got Flash and the uh, the Ghost Words to put down. Definitely a risk there for Cop. Here we in. go. He's got the charged up Qs too. Those those make a very satisfying sound. Yes, indeed. Oh, There's two more the charge. Inhibitor. Lands onto Jackie. Inhib is down. Will they go in? Cop finds it. Inhib is died. And that's going to let Curse just walk right away, saying we're not going to risk anything else. Good siege by this Curse lineup. They found the openings they wanted. They built a 7,000 gold lead now. Voice still top. The rest of the team grouping elsewhere. Now is the, would be the easy rotation for Curse. Back to Baron. It's going to take the next wave to walk all the way down though before the super minions actually have an effect. So Curse still have a little while to wait and Coast have a small window here where they can actually make their move which without losing more of their base. Well, they're looking at it right now. Jackie waiting the other side using his ball for vision and the battle has begun over Baron Nasher. So you boy just recalling in the front trying to bait out some summoners or some abilities. They're still losing health. Uh, Baron down below, one third HP. Dive not coming in for Coast, but Curse actually going to stop and turn around. Tanking deal with for Blast. so long, Jackie's at half. You're right. They've lost so much health. Because when the dive comes in, will they find the damage they need? The Wombo Combo comes across. One kill traded back and forth. Boy, boy being locked up, not finding anything else with the slicing mail from Jackie Low. Will they keep chasing? Shifter has maybe a couple more dashes. The dive in for Edward. Don't mash me. Still chasing. Does have flash and cleanse. Getting slowed down. Cop now in range. There's the slow. Putting more damage across Bash, but he's still on the chase, but can't go through the dissonance. Just the one kill for one. Health bar is incredibly low for Curse. Actually, even Coast, though the Doha Smite could try Baron. There's a large blob down here of red dots. That's minions slowly working towards their base, and Coast don't want to take the chance even. Uh, so they don't want to go for Baron. It would be a pretty risky play. They were able to come out on head, ahead in health. But yeah. even in kills, so they made their move in their small window that they had, and it was successful. And yeah, Baron Asher made that game a bit of a uh, 6v5, I suppose, and it did help Coast to win that battle, or at least trade even in the battle in terms of kills, and pick up a bunch of gold from that bottom lane pushing. With the inhibitors dead, all the lanes pushed towards Coast base. They've got to come back and get all those minions out of their way, get the golden experience, and then re-aggress on the map. Coast know this, know that Coast are on the other side of the map. Start Baron again, but again, they've got to be worried about how much damage this deals, and their positioning, Saint Vicious cut off from the team. Two more Guardian Angels came in for Curse, though, at that last buy. Cause Saint's gonna get charmed up. Nintendo, though, getting just destroyed and falls down. Jackie finds that kill. Zion's probably getting jumped up for us to push away. Shifter, can he find any kills? Looks for Kappa. Kappa is a GA. Charm doesn't do much. Zion's part on the backside. He's also going down. These are kill after kill going for Curse. Don't mash me. Finds one, though. Zion's Spartan goes down, making that one a three for one. And there's the rest of Curse uh, chasing down Coast. Now below half HP, Void by teleporting in towards the base of Coast. He's going for the uh, Nexus turret down there, the bottom one. He's got two super minions with him. And look at the health bar just getting destroyed. Don't match. He's got nowhere to go. Edward really trying to control this one. Can Matthew win that battle? He cannot. That's going to be another kill picked up. Boy Boy still on the siege. Cop is dominating. Six, zero, and eight. And another turret is going down. Daydreamin is alone for 13 seconds. Boy Boy still putting the damage. The minions coming through as well. Great job by Curse this time. Congratulations on their win. That's going to be the fourth spot and they're going to avoid that first round playoff game with TSM. Boy's going to dive on in. Nexus explodes. Curse going to end the regular season in fourth place with that win, putting themselves in a pretty good standing for the postseason. And are we surprised? Curse ending in fourth place. It seems like their destiny every year. They always seem to find their way back to that fourth place, don't they? They had a pretty good last week here though four and one i believe their record only dropped the game to cloud nine otherwise crushed all the competition and they were a team that was in huge danger of not making playoffs they were very much in danger of that they had a pretty rough road ahead of them um we actually i'm trying to remember back if they i think their opponents they were predicted to beat a lot of their opponents in head-to-head -head records but even still it's like look you're you're tied for six with coast you are a game from losing out of the playoffs, but they end in the top half of the standings. Sometimes that's what you need, that just being very close to the edge to give you that extra kick.
I don't know if you want to get kicked over the edge, though. That'd be <laughs> you scary. You don't want to get kicked into the edge. You want to get kicked backwards. Maybe the pole? I don't know. <laughs> we know what we're talking about. <laughs> Their lives were on the line, and Curse made it happen. Even in the, in the spring qualifiers, like way, way, way back at the beginning of the LCS season, they dominated their way through and, yeah. and became that first team to qualify that way. When it seems like when their backs are against the wall, Curse does show up pretty well. And what brought him there? A Amumu. Amumu, in fact. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you're very, very proud of that. I didn't get to see a Trinity Force. You got to see two Amumus, though, today. So this guy, a little bit luckier than me in terms of what the players brought out. But congrats, of course.